Hi and welcome to this video. In this one, we're going to talk about Tailwind CSS states. So hit that subscribe button and let's get started. Let's generate the simple HTML5 boilerplate and insert the Tailwind CSS CDN along with the title for this web page. Let's apply some basic styles on the body element, for example, a background color. Um, I'm going to increase the height to 100 VH. I'm going to convert this into a flex layout because I want the items to be horizontally in the center of the body element and vertically in the center as well. Let's change the flex direction to column and add a little bit of gap. I'm going to get us started by creating a button element. And the first state that we're going to talk about is going to be hover. Let's create a class. I'm going to provide a padding of 16 on the left and right and 8 on top and bottom. Let's convert the text or change the text color to white and round the corners or provide a border radius of 4 pixels. Uh, since we are changing states, I want it to happen smoothly. That's why I'm providing transition. Before applying any state, we have our button right here. So let me zoom that in and it has a background color of slate 600. Let's uh, hover that background color and when I hover on it, it should change to 800. There we go. And this change happens smoothly. And then basically the way it works is that we target that state and using a colon, we can change any property when the element is within that state. This is very different from the native CSS. In native CSS, what we have is we have a class, for example, a class of button or BTN. And then on that class, we apply a hover effect or a hover state. But in Tailwind CSS, a background color of slate 600 is a different class and then a hover background color slate 800 that is a completely different class so for everything you want to do in tailwind css you have different classes and then the active state is when you click on something that's when you activate this state let's save that let's click on it this is the active state so if I hover on it, that's the hover state. If I click and keep clicking, this is the active state. Next up, I'm going to talk about the focus state. And for that, I'm going to create an input element. The input element is going to have a type of text and the placeholder is basically going to be username. Let's add a, a little bit styling to make it look pretty. Um, before that, I'm going to apply an attribute, which is required. I'm going to come back to this in a moment. Uh, let's create a class, provide 16 pixels of padding on left and right, um, 8 pixels on top and bottom. Let's have the corners rounded. Now, the next state that I want to talk about is the focus state. The focus state is whenever we click inside an element. For example, an input element, when I click inside of it to write something, that's when I activate the focus state. So, for example, when I click, you can see there is an outline around the element that's activated when the element goes into focus. When we target that focus state, we can change any property or any style of that element. For example, when I'm in the focus state for that element or for this input, I want to change its background color to zinc 500. And this background color only happens or only is applied when we are within that state. So the focus state is another utility class much like the active and the hover so if i click on it now we are in the focus state if i try to type something we can see it's completely black we can change that so again through the focus state i can change the outline and i can set it to none and i, I can also change the text color to white and let's save that Let's take a look at our changes. So Muslim, you can see the text is white. Now, this required attribute, this allows us to target a specific attribute an element has. So if I create this class required and then provide a background color yellow 600, this background color only applies on any input that has the required attribute. Since this input has a required attribute, as soon as I save the changes, 
we can see the result in this on the web page. Let's target the required attribute and then I'm going to target the placeholder and change the color of the placeholder to white so we can see that. For this input element, we are going to talk about the disable state and the disable state is only applied when that input element has an attribute of disabled. Then those respective utility classes will be applied. Let's style our input element a little bit to make it look pretty. I'm going to add the same padding that we had before, same padding for X and Y. And then let's have the corners rounded. Now, when the input is disabled, what does that mean? It means when the input has an attribute of disabled, I want to apply a background color. Now, the background color here only applies because this input has an attribute of disabled. We can target the opacity of the input and we can also target the placeholder of any input that has an attribute of disabled. And then finally, what I want to add is I want to um, change the cursor behavior as well when I hover on it. And this is the cursor when it is not allowed. Let's move forward and let's talk about the other states. Uh, for this one, I'm going to talk about the focus within state. The focus within state is activated whenever we want to target an input or target an element. And then we want some styles or some utility classes to be applied on the parent of that input. Let's move forward. Let's apply a little bit of styling on the input. The type this time is going to be email and I'm just going to provide a placeholder of email. There we go. Now, if I click in here, you can see nothing changes for the div. So let's remedy that. I'm going to grab the div element and I'm going to say when the div is focused within, what does that mean? It means the div has an input element and when the input element, which is the child of the div, is focused, I want to apply a background color slate 300 to the div and I want to round the corners of the div which is the parent, apply a little bit of padding on the left and right and padding on the top and bottom. Let's save the changes. Let's click. You can see these styles, they only apply when the input, which is the child, is focused. Then the styles apply on the parent. This is the focus within state. And with this, this video comes to an end. See you in the next one.